Hello, 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 and welcome to Legend Series, everybody. I'm Squid CS, and I am here to bring you your weekly dose of Legend Series. We're here on this Tuesday evening for a single best of two between XCOM and Copsacker. This one uh, is surely going to be an interesting one. XCOM, a team who have had few struggles uh, as of late, definitely been a little more turbulent through the Legend Series, had a great start, um, and now find themselves just outside of this top four, just outside of this top six really needing to secure a couple of wins on the board. Copsacker, on the other hand, need to secure their first win on the board. They've not won a single map just yet in the Legend Series. I am really looking forward to seeing them maybe put a, uh, a good win on the board today. Look at XCOM, though. They are fifth on the leaderboard, looking for that top four placing. Remember, the top four teams get through to the Legend Series offline final, uh, which is going to be in an undisclosed location. We haven't quite announced it just yet. Yeah, but that's going to be a very exciting one. Up in five, uh, 1,570 legend points. That's our ELO system, which takes into account more than just the win-loss draw. It takes into account um, a variety of factors, such as the variety of maps you're playing, how badly you're beating your opponent, who you're playing against. There are lots and lots of factors that go into that ELO system. Very interesting stuff. It doesn't uh, account for the fact that Kopzaka, they're right at the bottom of the leaderboard, zero in seven. I, I really do hope that they can put a win on the board here today. And against XCOM, a bit of a hit and miss team, maybe they can make the magic happen. Uh, if we're maybe talking about maps, uh, this is maybe one of the problems that Kopzaka has. Kopzaka, a team with quite a narrow map pool. We've only seen them play uh, three or four maps, so their variety not very thick. They started Legend Series by consistently playing Cash Mirage, Cash Mirage, and then they had the chance to expand a little bit um, into the depths of Inferno, into other maps. I'd like to see Kopzaka get a little bit creative with that map pool and, and really expand out realizing that maybe these core maps haven't really helped them so far so maybe a bit of a curveball can happen because remember we are playing a best of two system where uh, each team is getting two bands so a pair of bands for each team and of course that means that you are not really going to be able to just ban away every single map. It can mean that you uh, put your put your opponents really off balance. Anyway, right, I've been talking about legend points and legend series. If you're new to this place, uh, this is what it all means. CSGO Legend Series is back and revamped with a brand new system never before seen in competitive esports. ELC Gaming is unveiling a brand new unique point system which takes a wide range of win conditions into account. From rank of opponent played, strength on T and CT side and variety of maps played will all influence points accumulated. Teams earn cash every time they play, with rewards given, win or lose. All matches will be broadcast twice per week, live from the ELC Hamburg Studios, home of Big Betty. An all-exclusive, all-inclusive $25,000 prize pool Legends Cup awaits where the two European champions will face off against a team from the US and a team from China. This is where legends are born. Welcome to Legend Series. Go to elcgaming.com for more information.
Very interesting stuff. And I think the main point there is it's more than just the win, draw, loss. Many, many more factors. Uh, and that's what's led us to a very interesting leaderboard with QB fire right at the top. I think mainly uh, the, the big talking point on the leaderboard is probably Pompa. They had a great start here at the Legend Series. A couple of default wins early on, but they find themselves above the 1500 ELO marker uh, pretty early on. But yeah, QB Fire being directly in first place, over 1600 Legend points. They're pretty much a solid look for the offline final at this point and looking to make their mark on that $25,000 Legends Cup later in the year. It's going to be a, a, a very interesting performance, especially if you get major quarterfinalists QB Fire in attendance. But then you have to see how they uh, mix and match on LAN. And sometimes, despite being to um, such prestigious tournaments earlier in the year, QB Fire doesn't necessarily get as much opportunity as other big teams at LAN. Not even as, as much experience as maybe other teams like Valiant, and other some of these more online core composed uh, teams that have recently, as of late, got their teeth into tournaments like Star Ladder, the V4 Festival, some of this, uh, some of these ESL tournaments as well, which is opening the the branch up to um, qualified teams through, um, like w whether that be Sydney, New York, Cologne, all of these tournaments having their own qualifiers. And QB Fire haven't had as much of a a, a sting in those in those uh, tournaments, but we will see them over in the face at Major in London later on this year. That's going to be interesting, and let's hope that we see them over at the Legends Cup as well, seeing if they can perform. But there are only two teams that we should be talking about here today, and they are Copsacker and XCOM. So two very interesting teams, of course. XCOM uh, have had their rough period. They've had uh, a bit of a rough time in certain weeks, but in fifth place, just one away from making it uh, to that offline final and Copsack is so far behind. And they've also had a turbulent time in terms of the roster. They've had mixes and matches. I think Heat is probably the one really stable uh, player in their team. He is kind of that core composed uh, member who's been the, the staple, the figurehead of that Copsack side and also, uh, they might be about to be picked up by a uh, by an organization. I know last week they had, I think it was Fragline, their uh, clan tag in their name, the avatar on their Steam profile as well. So they will be repping them over the next couple of weeks. We haven't had any official notice um, from from Fragline or from them to uh, to to do to do any of those changes. So I'm not sure if that's official or or, or what the status is um, with that change, but. Always very interesting stuff, but they do find themselves at zero to seven down in the Legend series. So, unfortunate start for them. They're playing their eighth game. They're over halfway there and haven't secured a single map win yet. Uh, I think that we'll see uh, a lot of these uh, big plays and big climbs in the Legend points come towards the last couple of weeks. Of course, you uh, lose less uh, for a loss than you gain for a win. Uh, so, you've got that ability to really bounce back. And with the Legend point system as well, when you're taking a uh, into account your opponent's uh, ranking, you've got the opportunity to gain way more points for every win. So if Kopsaka can put a couple of big, decent wins on the board, they can really get back into the pack and maybe even back into that top six. I think it's going to take a miracle, though, in their final five games of the Legend Series that we'll be seeing uh, very commonly over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we talked about um, Kopsaka's map pool earlier being quite weak and cut quite um, quite shallow. But maybe let's talk about XCOMs. I think Train has probably been a staple of their map pool over the last couple of weeks. We've seen uh, their Train play is very interesting. They like to take um, quite aggressive control on the A bomb site, especially when they're playing against underdogs. They want to get right up in your face and do the damage, putting a player or two into Pop Dog, maybe a player Pop Dog, a player Electric, and really crunch down on the defense on the A bomb site. That's something that they've done uh, to really counter the lesser team teams in this tournament. I think if Train is played today, they might do something very similar. Uh, and we should be starting in the next uh, five or so minutes. So 
obviously very interesting stuff. Um, we should be, yeah, as I said, we should be starting very, very shortly. Uh, if you do want to get involved in the conversation, you can do that both on Twitter, Facebook, all the good stuff, ELC Gaming TV, on all of that, uh, ELC Gaming on Facebook as well. So if you want to leave us a comment, you can do it on any of those platforms. And if you're going for Twitter, make sure you use the hashtag Legend Series uh, to get it um, on the screen. We might be putting them up between the games here today. Um, all very interesting stuff. Let's go to predictions, perhaps, for this game. I think that this. I think that you have to say this is probably going to be a 2-0 for Team XCOM. They've shown pretty darn consistency um, throughout this tournament, especially against the lesser opponents. When playing against teams like maybe playing Ducks, maybe Pride, the teams towards the lower end of the leaderboard there, they've really shown uh, dominance throughout. One of the weaknesses for XCOM, maybe this might play in Kopzaka's favorite at some point, is sometimes they do get a little bit complacent. So when they find themselves 10 rounds up, really far advanced in a series, they do um, throw away those leads sometimes. Uh, we saw that on train a couple of weeks ago. I think they were 14-4 up and they had to take it in overtime in the end after their opponents. I think Pride uh, taking, I think, 10 in a row and really going for that reverse sweep. So that's something that I don't want to see from XCOM today. If they're ahead, they need to just close it out and finish it off uh, and not go too meme with anything uh, and really just try and focus down, rattle in uh, and, and make it happen. But I've got my fingers crossed. I've got my toes crossed, ready for Kopzaka to do some damage here in this series. And the one player that we need to show up, he showed up in the first couple of weeks, not so much recently as Heats. I want to see him with that flashy, starry, streaky orping doing all the damage, especially on maps like Cash. I feel like Cash, the A-bomb site, is one of his staples, especially with that Deagle, uh, with a rifle, with an AWP. Anything. He loves a wide variety of weapons, especially on that A bomb site. We've seen him have a couple of highlight plays towards that side of the map as well. So I'm sure that we'll see either a Cash or a Mirage out of Kopsaka. And I'm going to predict a train for XCOM, but I haven't got um, word on that just yet. So let's hope that um, it's an interesting map. I like the variety of maps. Fun fact we haven't seen Overpass played at all this legend series so let's hope that we see it sometime soon i don't think that you will i think uh, that overpass is probably a map that lots of uh, teams and players are perma banning but i've just got word it should be um we should be getting live into this game any moment now so the first map almost underway all very interesting stuff, and I'm excited to watch some kind of strike. I hope you are as well. Type in the Twitch chat. Go ask in those questions uh, if you've got any. Uh, we'll be looking at Twitch chat over the next couple of hours. And we've got, what's that, almost 2,000 people here. So um, awesome, awesome. We should be, uh, we, we should be uh, good and ready to go uh, any moment now, um, which is very interesting. Have we got any questions? Should I have a look? Look at this, getting into train there in the warm-up, apparently not going for the uh, not going for the knife round just yet. The session top tipper, Patcher, he's putting those five dollars in. I saw them talking about that in the in the chat earlier. But yeah, we've got somebody applied to be a moderator. Oh, two disconnected. Somebody, somebody applied to be a moderator. Should I let him be a moderator, folks? What do you think? What do you think? He's got an ESL um, tag on him. I guess, I guess that means no. I guess, I guess we shouldn't do it. But yeah, apparently we had a couple of pl players uh, disconnect. You can see that the, uh, the the pictures on the side of um, the Kopzaka side, Fragline. Uh, that's the organization that they have been touted to be picked up by. Uh, so that's, of course, very interesting. And, of course, the Legend Series gives a variety of teams big opportunities at the highest of levels. Getting your name under any sort of organization is, of course, extremely important. I remember Kopzaka literally had to make their logo um, to, to join the Legend Series. So that's the sort of... Um, 
tier of teams we're talking about here, the lower end, uh, and it's and that's not a problem. In, in fact, it's a very good thing. You, you're wanting those sort of teams uh, to to get their first opportunity with the Legend series, and when a player, maybe it's going to be Heat, maybe it's another one of these um, up-and-coming stars, when they get their opportunities at a higher level, or maybe even at the highest level, uh, they can really look back at these sort of moments, these sort of opportunities as the ones that matter. But let's get right live into the knife round. Only the one best of two today, remember, folks. So all the pressure's on, I guess, to give us a, a good game starting here on train. So I predicted a train for XCOM, and then I predicted a, a, a cash and Mirage. I think I'd go for cash uh, for the Cop Zaka side. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be disappointed at a Mirage pick, though. Uh, let's see uh, what we've got. Um, for the for, for the pick. Oh, it looks like it is going to be a cash. So 100% map pick rate for Squid CS here today. Pat myself on the back. Should I pat? So we pat myself on the back right there. So Kopzaka not going to win that knife round. Funnily enough, I think that they've got an over 50% win rate on those knife rounds. Um, one of the one, one of their most most effective rounds in the game is is when their opponents don't have weapons. Funnily enough, but. Let's get into this one with XCOM starting on the CT side of things. Of course, Kopzaka wanting maybe a fast running gun style on the pistols with the Glocks in hand. Four sets of Kevlar, it's Moors picking up the utility, double flash and a smoke here to start things off. Usually that that's a telltale sign that they are going towards the A site. You'd be wanting to pick up Molotovs if you're going towards B, but Bennett going to be finding the first uh, frag for the T side of the fr of the game and a second right there. Both headshots, both nice and precise. Texec going to battle it down. We've seen good consistency out of XCOM from Train. But Goofy is going to find another. He's one of the players that you need to step up. And wow, a couple of frags from Stark is going to finish things off and put a pistol round on the board for Team XCOM. So 1-0 there. I think that on the CT side, that pistol round is the most important round of the game. You're gaining that um, initial consistency. You're um, also just getting momentum built up and the economy rolling with that. So a couple of M4s picked up. Tech seconds start going to be on those. A few SMGs as well. This is a, a good balance to have. Adara does rattle away and find a shot with a P250, but does get chipped back with the scout. This is nice damage from XCOM, whittling away these pistols, playing it long range to be able to deal with those weapons out, of course. And the final frags do come through, so all dealt with. Majority of the damage done with that scout, of course, on the B site, those long range angles, you can pick it to perfection. Train is one of the only maps in the map pool right now, which I would really recommend a double AWP setup. Uh, Dust2 being maybe another one, but Train being the most effective double AWP strat map. So 2-0 on the board, XCOM off to a great start. And it's really up to Cop Zaka to do the damage and, and actually come in and really seize the moment here. But I'm not sure if they're quite ready for this one just yet. They're certainly not uh, ready and waiting for this as Goofy rattles through with the MP9. There's a damage up top. And now the pistols have to rotate elsewhere, but they are just charging inwards. Goofy does catch heats by surprise. On the back track, just a dare left, pistol in hand. And he's going to be finished off by the MP9 as well. So three kills on that weapon there for Goofy. That's $1,800 in the bank. A lot of extra cash going into this initial buy round. This initial gun round for Team Kovzaka. Go with the AWP on heats. Quad AK-47s built around this. Smokes on all five players as well. So they have the ability to go for a solid setup. Heats with a headshot. But T-Tech eliminated. Nice trade by Goofy, though, to eliminate Heats and make sure he doesn't really come away with, with a frag more than he dealt. So XCOM not leaving that situation empty-handed. We'll level up and even up the numbers. Tank sec just charging into this one. 
Moses is going to find him. And this is um, one of what... That was a big mistake, of course. And I, I don't want to see that being a, a consistent factor for the XCOM side. I want to see them play this one sensibly and really do their work on both sides of the map. But with 3-0 here and being a man down, it's what they can do with these rifles to finish off this round and really trade and charge it back. Minute clock down. One single minute on the clock. Couple of tags inwards. Goofy is going to spot out players trying and Data flash back into this bomb site. But Adara finishes him off with a headshot. That's traded back by the scout once again. They have to go for the cross here, and it's a dangerous one at that as he takes tags and almost finds that second player. Kevin has to be careful as the nades do rebound quite nicely. Stark needs to be careful and wary of these nades turtling and charging into his position. He might whiz by, land him in the face, and do a lot of damage. Stark with the majority of the buy here an AWP. That's about 75% of their investment as they back off and try and save the pair of sniper rifles. Stomp drops down. D scout picks up an M4 and retort. Bennett and Moore's left looking to charge into his position and try and eliminate this M4. As he's tapping from long range. Kopzak are giving away a lot more than they're taking. Is he even... Trades it up to an AK-47. A couple of pop shots out. And one round to Kopzak. Exactly what they need here. Early in the first map. Getting some rounds on the board. They cannot let that be the only one though. Otherwise their economy is going to be in absolute tatters after this one. XCOM going for the double up setup. Stomp and Stark. Both the S's. On the double AWP. As the, oh wow, the trade-in doesn't come through. Goofy does find two. Bomb dropped and a nice peek in from Petit Tech there to eliminate Kevin in that situation. He needed to really know that those shots were about to come in. And with the M4 ready, Goofy, lovely double kill. The AWP doing the rest of the work to force Heat back, obviously with the AWP in hand. Wanting to do his best work here. Traded out to the triple AK-47 setup. This is how you know a CT side is running on steam. Heats is going to find at least one before any retort comes through. But they are looking to eliminate him. And more importantly, eliminate this AWP, which is exactly what happens. Start finds him from long range. Orp versus Orp. Stomp's been doing good work so far. Five and one. Goofy, eight and one. Both the Orpers really chipping in. XCOM already going for a triple AWP setup. Usually this is a sign of desperation when a team does this, but for XCOM, you might think it's quite the opposite, a sign of complacency. 4-1 on the board. They're feeling confident. Cop Zaka with the pistols charging in towards the B-bomb site. You've got Petit Tech playing up close and personal with the AK-47. So you've got the rifles ready to make their mark. Goofy even picking up that third AWP. You don't often see him um, while playing the third AWP in a setup. Obviously, they're playing with a, a different lineup today. Stomp being that, that fifth player that we haven't really seen before in the Legend series. So Smokes do whistle down on the B-bomb site. We've got XCOM playing Turtling over on the A-bomb site. Remember, this is a best of two, as you can see at the top of your screen. Cash is going to be the second of the day. Stark finds that initial shot. No real flashes to count him out here. He's able to just pick apart this attack. Stark and Stomp doing lots of damage. And now the Deagles have to rain through. Bennett does swing 180 degrees for that second shot. And now these two warps, considerably weaker, but XCOM find both those frags. 5-1 on the board. Of course, Scott Zaka going to have nice investment into the next round. No warp though for for heats, especially. You want to see him with the sniper rifle. 
Instead, going for the pistols again. I'm actually quite a fan of this. I like that Cop Zaka are playing the economy nice and safe. Sometimes you see a team get flustered after being a couple of rounds down. Cop Zaka should know that they're on the T side of train. They're not expected to get more than four or five rounds this half. It's really about what you can do on the CT side. And Texet doing exactly that. A triple kill. All sprayed down. Adair is going to do a little bit of damage in response. But he is stuck around in this corner and Rifles charging into his position, picked up the AWP. And XCOM are looking extremely just comfortable right now. Texec with a big, beautiful spray down there. Spending a lot of bullets in those first three players. Not able to deal with the Dara as well, but charging four players into your position. He got exactly what he was expected of him done. Up, back in the hands of Heats. Stark is playing this aggressive angle with the smoke out just so he can run faster and instantly smoke that off before they can charge down his position. You usually see this position played with the Molotov so he can underhand throw it on the back track, but he's obviously feeling nice and confident that he can put that smoke down in time and get right back onto the bomb site, ready to get the rifle back out for the firefight to come in. Needless to say, there are only two players rotating through this position with the bomb really lurking and lurching down towards Pop Dog all alone, single handedly. This is the aggressive stance on the A bomb site we've seen pretty commonly from XCOM. They're placing two players, one at electric, one on that middle train position to look all the way over things. That brown train is mainly being used to look into mid main with Stomp playing nice and close, up close and personal, ready for Heats to maybe take this tag inwards. He's going to spot out his heels before Heats is able to rattle off a shot. Stomp misses the first. Back into blue train, though, between these two. And he's going to be countered from behind. But T-Tech does find a pair of shots in the meantime, but dealt with swiftly by Heats. He puts this back into a three versus three. Molotov's a down start, takes a lot of damage from that as Texec trades it in once again on the cross. Nice double from him to shut the cross down. Kobzaka can't make it. Bomb dropped, everything dropped, and a 7 1 score line for the Poles. You see Kobzaka going for these pistols once again. Of course, you don't want to be going for massively aggressive investment. This early in the game, you really want to be just playing passive and not allowing your opponents to gain a huge amount of momentum. But by response, this has happened regardless. Of course, train. Interesting map. And Kopzaka being on the receiving end of somewhat of a beat down right now. Just the charge away and lots of damage done from long range. Just headshot after headshot from Texec there on the defense. But there's not a lot that Kovzak can really do from that range, so not too much to shout and scream about. As Goofy and Stomp being the two sniper rifles in play this time. Kopzaka need a couple of nice, firm entry kills, but that isn't going to be one of them. Kevin takes a big meaty nade to the face and doesn't really trade a lot back. Stomp finding that initial shot. It's a headshot. Heats really needs to try and trade something back sometime soon. But as the flashes pour in, Heats is finally going to find one. Those are the openings that he's known for in this Legend series. That orb is going to be traded back through as Heats oh, takes a sniper shot in the back. As he tries to recede and rotate backwards. Four versus three here. XCOM is normally coming out on top of all of these initial situations, all but one of these rounds that's happened as so. Stomp's got a, a clear firing range here. That smoke is really poor as well. They can go for the cross here. I'm surprised Moors didn't get plucked out of the air. 
as the nade does fly back and do a lot of damage. Stark now going in, and he is going to spot Kevin there. Nice bit of trigger discipline to see if he could spot the next guy, but has to take the shot sooner or later. But T Tech gets that trade in as it's just Moore's left. One versus three, and this is a crucial one. But he steps out in the open, and Petit Tech makes swift work of him as well. So nine to one, as we are looking at Kopf Zakra on the receiving end of another beatdown here on train. I'd really like to see a, a set execute from Kopsaka, maybe a wall of smokes on the A site. In weeks one and two of the Legend series, we saw Kopsaka go for a very tactical approach. It didn't really work out, but now they've ditched the tactics. They ditched a couple of those teammates as well, but oh my lord, Texec, what was that headshot? He didn't spot anything, but I think he hit double shots there on into Adra. The last of which being a headshot. Okay, then. Or VAC. People say that the German people are hacking over in the chat, but maybe not. Maybe not. Goofy playing so aggressive here as well. It's not common whatsoever to really see anybody push into a main. I don't think this is going to work out. I feel like they're probably going to flash this corner. And there is the flash. But he turns around in time. Gets almost a double spray down there. The Molotov is able to finish off Bennett. Goofy doing a fantastic job with that push. You barely ever see that a main aggression warrant two frags. But this time it certainly does. T-Tech getting up close and dealt with by Eats, but oh wow, there's Stark getting aggressive to put double digits on the board for the poles. And here we see it again. Oh, nasty. Nades inwards. Not going to find anything. And of course, Cop Zachar aren't playing towards A main. I think T-Tech's actually stuck on that ladder there. I don't know why you play this position if he is. But, oh no, maybe he isn't. Obviously, your weapon is inaccurate even if you're just touching the ladder. There towards any ladder in this in this map. There are, of course, more ladders on. I think there are more ladders on train than any other map. It certainly wouldn't surprise me. I can't think of any others that would have any more. Most of these trains have ladders. We've maybe got like five or six on the B-bomb site alone. Maybe we'd have to go ladder counting. That'd be an interesting one. Wow, heat. There's a lot of shots there. Kevin finally going to avenge his fallen teammate. But Adara and Bennett have a lot of work to do. A two versus three. Here to put the second round on the board, and all three members here from XCOM really waiting for this one to happen. Tech Goofy, both finding the shots. Cruel. This is nasty stuff. 11 to 1. You've seen some pretty one sided scorelines here this Legend series for Kopzaka, but. Whew, this is maybe one of the, one of the special ones. This is very, very one-sided. Oh, look at this. He's going for these wall bangs again. Left of heat, right of he's Oh, right again! Another headshot! Stomp! That's actually back-to-back! -back. Oh no, oh, could it get any worse? Kopzaka not catching a single break right now. Stomp continuing the pain with the AWP. Another tag comes in, now the CZ to make, well, things worse, adding insult to injury. Stomp knows where this final man is for the final shot. A beautiful triple kill from him, starting it with a straight headshot onto Heats. 
12 to 1 being the score line. Let's have a little cheeky look at that again. Look at Heat. Night Night Sun right between the eyes. And before they can even go for the setup, that's obviously one smoke gone from your setup. It means that you're going to have a big hole in your attack when you're trying to make your way closer. Holds it, XCOM can just pick you apart from. Now they want to try something a little faster. Goofy going to fall quite early. Kevin trying to make this aggressive from above. He does get caught out. Plucked out the air by Stomp, who goes for the second frag. The second shot. Beautiful at that as he tries to go barreling in closer for the third. Moore's gone. And 13-1. Kopsaka might be about to be history. Yeah, there's that final shot from Stomp there. Um, yep. This is a stomp, appropriately named. This could be the quickest day of casting I've ever done. I'm going to work, do 25 minutes of work and then go home. Not bad, not bad. 13-1 though on the board as of course the orc being the staple of the attack for Kopzaka being that primary weapon that he has to try and poke into one bomb site via the Stark being the B defense right here he's trying to go barreling on through can't find that initial shot stomp able to recede and back off dealing attack of damage trying to go for the headshot adara not able to hit it as this bomb does drop and go down that molotov needs to get that bomb down quite quickly oh he gets finished off though and a team kill headshot from moore's not sure how the hell that happened kevin is going to try and get aggressive, but both these players are so low. How the hell is Heats going to be able to do this one? One versus four, and there's the initial frag coming in. Needs a flick, but he does miss that one at least. Tries to back off. Is Petit Tech going up close in personal headshot to finish things off? 14-1 for XCOM. What an absolute beatdown at the end of the first half. Second half here, must win pissed around for Cop Zaka. If XCOM win it, well, probably going to be a 16-1 here. I think that's probably the favorite scoreline from them. Remember the Legend series? You're playing with that Legend Points ELO system. So if you can win games extremely convincingly, you're going to gain more points off the back of it. And XCOM don't want to slow down. They're going straight into the B-bomb site. T-Tech finding the initial shot as well. They're just going hurtling through. Three frags in a couple of seconds. The fourth might be in, well, on the cards as well. Heat's falling to absolute pieces. Just cut down to size by XCOM here as they do salvage this B bomb site. It seems all over. 15 1. Kovzaka can't do anything about these poles. I think this is the biggest beatdown I've seen all at Legend Series. Such a shame. One of the only bet, well, the only best of two of the night. The first map. And. It might just end like this. Of course, Kopzaka has to buy up in this one. They've got no other option but XCOM not slowing things down. They are just going to be going into these bomb sites. Bennett finding a pair of frags. Goofy trading it back. We might be all done here for map one here today. And these final two players over in Pop Dog almost going to be finished off. Heat some more's left. As, yeah, just Heat behind Green Train. Has to make nice one versus two happen, but he's already been spotted out there by Texec. Does find at least one shot, but he has to deal with the AK-47. Let's rattle him down to size. 32 HP, and now finally taken care of. Heat's gone. Kopzaka down the toilet here on train. So a big first map for Kopzaka. Oh, well, for, for XCOM, sorry. Not a big map for, for, um, for Kopzaka in any regard that was quite a beat down that's the most dominating um scoreline i've really seen and just 
all round domination here on train that map probably ended in, in like 20 minutes maybe even less so a disappointing first performance from the Kopzaka side the Germans let's see what they can do on cash we're going to be back in about 5-10 minutes for this second and final map of the day don't go anywhere <laughs> 